Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today is the 5th of September and you know what that means. It's the monthly update time for our Nexus and Pixel devices. So first off I just want to apologize for the lack of videos. University has been quite busy recently these past two weeks but now that things have been dying down I thought what a great way to start off again by doing one of these update videos. So here we are. Our device is a Pixel 2 today. We're rooted and we just need to get onto the September security update. So of course we're going to have to download a few things here. Step one is to download the SDK platform tools. Hopefully by now, if you're not new, um, you already have this downloaded somewhere, but just make sure that you have the latest version here. You can see 28.01 has been released for September. So I'm going to have to download that. So click the one that's right for your operating system and then just download using the blue button. I'm going to save this just in my Android folder. You can see I have the old one there. So just make sure you have the new one whenever you see it available. And every month it's a good time to check that you have the latest one. And I'm going to delete the old one to as not confuse ourselves here. Next up we want to download the factory image for our Pixel device. So on the right hand side you can click on Walleye or Timon if you if you have the Pixel 2 XL and just download the one that is right for you. You might have one that's specific for a carrier but this month at least for the Pixel 2 there's just one link here so click on the blue download link again. So next up is TWRP. Now I know that previously or last month they released an update where hopefully we can decrypt our data partition on Android P with no issues so we're going to be downloading the latest version of TWRP. I'll also have the link for TWRP for the Pixel 2 XL. They should follow the same version numbers. So click on the one of the primary download links and then click on the latest image which should be 3.2.3-1. Now depending on when you watch this video there could have been a newer version but it's just best to download the latest version to correspond with the latest factory images kind of thing like that. And if you want to install TWRP since um, you can decrypt the data partition now. You might as well download the Pixel 2 TWRP installer. So download the one that matches the zip, so usually the latest one, and have that downloaded as well. I'm not going to do that, but I'll tell you when you can flash that. And last but not least, we also need to download Magisk so we can reroute our device. Now notice we don't really need the or to use the beta thread anymore. They've merged the stable and beta versions of Magisk into the main Magisk thread, so don't go looking at the old thread there. So here we can just download right here the latest stable or beta. Currently they're the same thing, but I'm just going to download the latest beta version, so 17.1. And everything I've downloaded is just in a Android folder here that has all the files that we need. So I'm going to minimize our Chrome window, and right now we're just going to extract a few things. So to start off, we're going to extract the platform tools folder. I'm just going to extract the whole thing here. Just give it a couple of seconds. This is just so we don't leave out any important files they may have changed in the new platform tools update. So we're going to open this folder in a new window. We can do that by right clicking on it and clicking on open in a new window. And we'll just get it started right now. We're going to open up a command prompt window or a PowerShell window or terminal window in the same directories where all our little exe files are you know with the adb and fastboot make 2fs things like that so on windows you can hold shift and right click on an empty space in the folder to open a powershell window here like so otherwise uh, more convenient for everyone i guess you can type in cmd or powershell in the address bar up here and hit enter and that'll open up a command prompt window or powershell window to the same directory as where you are, which is very handy. So once you've got that done, you can close the platform tools folder, leave the command prompt window open, like so, and we're going to extract stuff from the factory image as well. So open up our factory image here, and then you want to open up the factory image folder, and then you want to extract these three files over here. Just drag them outside. Okay, so once those are extracted, I'm just going to uh, close the factory image zip file. And I'm also going to have a jump cut where I just reposition some windows, so don't be too alarmed. Okay, so I've just put these things side by side with room for the camera later on. But all you have to do is that, pretty much. And right now, you can also copy the latest version of the Magisk zip file and the TWRP installer zip file if you are planning on 
installing TWRP, you need to copy those to your device right now. Um, I've already done that, so just make sure you do that as well. But you can sideload them anyway, and I'll show you how to do that when we're in TWRP later on. But right now, we need to reboot our device into the bootloader. Now to do that, it's quite simple. We just need to hold the power button here, and also grab your USB cable while you're at it. So grab that and plug it in, and then tap on restart. Now hold the volume down button as soon as the screen turns black or freezes, and your phone should boot into the bootloader very soon. Now all you have to do is keep waiting. Okay, there we go. So it may take a while, but that's fine. So I've just uh, plugged it in here, and now we need to go back to our computer real quickly. In the command prompt window that you opened up earlier, we can just check if our device is being successfully connected uh, to our computer. We can do that by typing in fastboot, uh, sorry, devices. Now, if you're having problems typing in this command here, that's because there are different ways of actually accessing the fastboot executable, which is the thing that we're actually running the program uh, on different console or terminal windows. I'll throw up a picture right now so you can see which way that you'll need to invoke the fastboot executable. On PowerShell, you need to do a dot backslash, and on the terminal, you need to do a dot forward slash. But if you're using the command prompt window and you're already changed into the correct directory, then you shouldn't need to put any uh, prefixes on the fastboot executable. Okay, so once you're comfortable with that and your device has actually returned the serial number that's connected, please make sure only one device is connected at a time. It should tell you if you've got multiple devices in fastboot. But once you've sorted that out, we can go ahead and flash the new bootloader image. So to do that, we're just going to type in fastboot flash, oops, bootloader. Leave a space after the word bootloader and drag in the bootloader image and hit enter. Now this will write the bootloader image to your current slot, mine is B, yours could be A, but it doesn't matter. Once the bootloader has flashed, uh, you can reboot your phone back into the bootloader by typing in fastboot reboot dash bootloader and hit enter. You should see our phone restart itself back into the bootloader. Once your phone is in the bootloader again, you can now type in the command to update the radio on your device. So we type in fastboot flash radio and drag in the radio image and hit enter. Now once you've done that, we're going to reboot our phone into the bootloader once more. You can press up on your arrow keys or the up arrow key and to select a previous command and you can hit enter again. So you don't have to type out the long commands again. Now once your phone is back into the bootloader, we're going to use our super secret special update command and it goes like this, so we'll type in fastboot double dash, so two hyphens and then type in the word skip dash reboot. This makes sure that our device doesn't automatically restart so we don't have to panic about getting it back into the bootloader so we can reroute our device, so this takes care of that for us. Then we can type in the word update and then drag in the image zip file that we extracted earlier from within the factory image. So that's not the same as the factory image, it's the image zip file within your factory image. So it's going to start extracting everything to our computer, including the massive system image, and we're just going to wait for all this to do its job. If you do run into errors, uh, such as too many links or unknown command or something like that, and the update command doesn't successfully complete, you can reboot your phone back into the bootloader via those commands or just by using the stuff on your phone, the buttons, and then try the command again. Alternatively, you can try a different USB port or try a different USB cable as well. So here you can see I've got an error here reading the sparse file, uh, but that's all right. Maybe I don't have enough RAM or whatever, but we're just going to try it again real quick. So I'm going to reboot my phone back into the bootloader. And you can see that it's probably disconnected already because it's just stuck there. So I'm going to press Control C to break that command. And on here, I'm just going to unplug and use the volume buttons to select Restart Bootloader and click on the power button. And I'm going to replug it back in to the computer here. And I'm going to run the Fastboot Devices command. And you can see it's back up there. And I'm going to run the same update command as well. And hopefully that works out. Okay, so it looks like it's started all right, so we can see that has worked okay so far. But yeah, just if you run into any issues, just try simple things like that, see if you can get back on track. 
So I'm going to fast forward the rest of this until the update command finishes and we'll finish the rest of the process. Okie dokie, so that took under a minute to do and what we need to do now is boot up the TWRP image. So we're going to do that by typing in fastboot boot, leave a space after that and drag in the TWRP image that we downloaded earlier, hit enter and our phone should boot into TWRP. So at this point we'll be able to see if uh, TWRP can decrypt our data partition so we don't have to sideload things or even remove the screen lock and I've realized that it's actually not necessary to do that when we need to flash things that aren't on our data partition. I'll show you how to do that later if this doesn't work. Okay, here we go. Took a little bit longer than expected, but we'll just de try to decrypt our data partition. And I guess it's still not happy. So if, if this happens to you, then that's all right. We can have a workaround for that. But if you do end up decrypting your data partition, you can just flash magisk as usual. So right now we can hit cancel if we can't do it and then swipe to allow modifications. And if you had already copied magisk over and that TWRP did decrypt your data partition, you would just go and install, you know, locate it and swipe to flash, end of story. But in case that you can't decrypt your data partition, it turns out you can actually just sideload the magisk zip file and it should work just as usual. I presume that is because during the boot up, Magisk will do all its setup again if it wasn't able to do it in the first place. That's my theory anyway, but it's probably not right. So in the case that you can't access your data partition and you're like, oh, what do I do now? But there's very something very cool, very simple. Just head over to the advanced menu, tap on ADB sideload, and chances are you've probably used this before one way or another, and it's quite simple. So we need to go back to our computer for this, and we need to type in the words ADB sideload, leave a space after that and drag in our magisk zip file. Now in the case that you want to install TWRP and you can't access your data partition, you need to flash the TWRP installer first. So instead of dragging in the magisk zip, you can type in ADB sideload and then your TWRP installer. But the same thing goes for those who can decrypt their data partition. You want to flash the TWRP installer and then flash magisk afterwards. So I'm just going to sideload Magisk right now because I don't plan on installing the TWRP custom recovery to my device. So it's going to start the ADB daemon and then you can see instantly that things have started to change on our device and we are flashing Magisk through that. So our computer is going to be streaming that zip file to our phone and our phone is going to process the things like so. So that's done. We are now rerouted. So I'm going to tap on reboot system and I'm not going to install the TWRP app on our phone and from there our phone should be able to boot up normally into Android. Now just as a precaution if your phone doesn't actually turn on uh, doesn't make it into Android after this all you should have to do is open up the image zip file and drag out the boot image and flash the boot image to your device and that should erase whatever Magisk has done to it and then your phone should be able to boot up normally after that. Alternatively, you can just run the fastboot update command that we did earlier once again and that should clear any modifications done to that. Uh, that's if you're running into any issues turning on. So we'll leave our phone here for a little bit and hopefully it makes it into Android where we'll check out Magisk Manager. Alrighty, so our phone's booted up here. Let's just um, turn it on and have a look. Everything is still there. Wallpaper, do not disturb. Very good. And we're just finishing our system update here, so we are probably on the September build. So let's just have a look at Magisk Manager. Have a look at that real quick. We can check safety net status now since the API that I was using is, should be fixed or changed in a way where we can actually get a real result. So we'll give that a moment. And once it says, already says latest version and installed version, so we know we're rooted properly and we are passing safety net as well. And all our modules should be there as well unless you've uninstalled Magisk before. But yeah, that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. And if you have any other questions or queries, feel free to leave it down in the comments below or you can visit me on Discord and we can have a chat there if you want to. But otherwise, uh, that's how you update your rooted Pixel 2. 
uh, without having to lose any data or anything like that. And that was quite quick. So thank you very much for watching guys, and as always, happy flashing.